another episode of Community Voices. Today, we got Tara Hauska with us. Um, we're going to discuss Native American Heritage Month and, you know, all the work she's doing. So, Tara, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Cool. So just tell us about, you know, Native American culture as a whole, especially for people who may, who may not be too familiar with it. Uh, I mean, Native culture here in the United States is very uh, diverse. There are close to 600 federally recognized tribes and many others that are not federally recognized. We're a very broad, uh, rich base of different cultures all across the country. And um, yeah, I think people see little bits and pieces and they're usually kind of wrapped up into one kind of native image, but there's lots of us out there then all carrying different traditions and different understandings. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's the some of the beauty in it where everyone's so different, but together at the same time. You know, For sure. And what are some outdated representations you see today of Native Americans? Basically every sports mascot that uses Native imagery. I mean, right. watching the Braves during the Tomahawk Chop still is uh, pretty offensive and just like, come on guys, where are we at? It's 2021. The entire country was on fire last year because of racial injustice, right? And right. you guys are still doing the same, same old, same old that you've been doing for hundreds of years since this country right. began. Um, a country that's based in theft of land and theft of labor. And now it's, mm -hmm. it's genocide and slavery. So I think that we uh, are misrepresented a lot. The only time you usually see us on television or on movies is in beads and buckskin. I mean, think about how many Native reporters have you seen? How many Native uh, hosts or journalists or talking heads? I mean, we're just, we're absent, even though they're, we're the original peoples of this place. Yeah, absolutely. It's just like, you know, the, the representation isn't, you know, there at all, especially uh, today. No, and I mean, like our kids are still learning the same old thing they've always been taught, which is that we kind of disappeared mm -hmm. after the hundreds like there are no native people really after that and there's like maybe little tiny bits and pieces but here we are coming into thanksgiving where i'm sure many many kids across the country will be learning about the pilgrims and the indians and that completely false story right and not like the entire truth well yeah it wasn't a good time genocide right. is not a beautiful thing right like uh the eradication and removal of peoples is is not uh kind and there was moments where we're like we were giving and and shared but it doesn't mean that that was not answered with brutality right absolutely and you know what would you say is the biggest uh roadblock challenging you know native americans today i mean i think education is really at the foundation of a lot of it if, if people started out with a different story and they understood and that doesn't just go for our peoples that goes for lots of people in this place that yeah. uh, now called america it's you know when you start out with with a lot of misinformation and that's like your understanding it's really hard to undo that right and especially when there's so few of us because of genocide like there's there's not that many native people left right but mm -hmm. we still are millions there are millions of us and we're accessible now through the internet, which is very helpful. Um, but I think, uh, you know, for, for folks that are trying to figure out like, what can I do? I mean, just unteaching those narratives yeah. is so important. And you know, listening is so important. Like learn how to listen. Like if a people is telling you for 70 years, like your sports team is offensive, listen. If a people is telling you for 500 years, stay off our land, like, specifically like with what's happening now with all the extractive industry that's showing up in Indian country, you know, mm -hmm. they're still trying to take what we have left and contaminate our water, contaminate our, our uh, communities and our treaty territory. You know, I mean, it's, it's time for, for a different way forward. Absolutely. And how would you feel, you know, pop culture has, you know, represented your culture today? Like, do you feel there could have been any improvements just as a whole, as far as like pop culture, especially like, you know, in the States and what would you like to see change? 
I mean, I'd like to see that 90% of our representation, which is so small to begin with, is not us in buckskin and beads. Right. And the only time you really see us is when there's a Western movie that pops up starring some white guy and mm -hmm. we're like the side characters to his mission. I mean, that's generally what you see. Um, I know there are some shows and native content that's being created out there, especially through social media and uh, some some shows like Reservation Dogs on Netflix and uh, um, Rutherford Falls that's on NBC now. I mean, there's there's some places that we're starting to creep in, but that's like two shows, right? you know, so <laughs> sad. <laughs> Like they keep recycling, like Hollywood keeps recycling the same stories over and over again, right? And the only thing they really seem to have left is new superhero stories. But right. it's like, you guys don't recognize that there's like an entire like series of stories to tell of the people that are from here? Like, come on. Yeah, you know, people just get tired of hearing the same stories that, you know, they've seen time and time and time and time again, where I feel like from your point, you know, it'll be refreshing and you know, something new to accurately, you know, depict true stories of Native American culture instead of, you know, just the same Western kind of cowboys and things of that nature. Well, that or else you see us on some special where it's like broken down Native people on reservations that have like are in deep poverty and have nothing, mm -hmm. you know, like that is definitely still something that we face right all over Turtle Island, but it's not the only story and it's not the only uh it's not the only existence that we have right, right? like we're a diverse people and uh we have lots of victory and resilience and beautiful stories to tell too absolutely and then uh so from what you're seeing today what are some accurate depictions of your culture i know you mentioned like two uh shows so would you consider anything else that accurately depicts just like your culture correctly I mean, honestly, it's the stories that are coming from the communities themselves that are coming yeah. from the people. Like, I would say, well, in all of its egoism and uh, narcissism and all the things that social media can lead to, yeah. uh, it also has created a platform, though, for people to tell stories and to, you know, have a voice mm -hmm. in, in how an issue or a people or a you know, a fight or a, a win or, or anything like that is depicted, right? I, I think there are places out there and I've seen a lot of really cool native content being being made across all kinds of different platforms. For sure. All it takes is one person to start something then eventually, you know, they'll start building and gaining traction and then, you know, becoming more mainstream, so. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, I think people are, I don't know. I've written for some mainstream stuff before. And every time I do, it's usually a story that gets shared so many times. And the editors are always so like, wow, this is so awesome. And I'm like, yeah, people are interested in hearing from a community they almost never do. You know, yeah. like it's if you if you just ask, you know, it's there. <laughs> for sure. And then what is something or what is one thing you want people to take away after, you know, watching this interview? I mean, this is a tough, tough time, right? Like we got November as Native American Heritage Month and it's the same month that also hosts Thanksgiving. It's the one right after like Columbus Day and all that. Mm -hmm. Like, it's, And Native American Heritage Day is actually on Black Friday. Most people have no idea about mm -hmm. that. Um, you know, the day that's literally about consumerism and overconsumption of everything that comes from somewhere else, right? Like right. all these things come from places, they come from people's lands, they come from people's hands. Um, I hope that people really, uh, you know, I, Thanksgiving is a, is a time to sit down with family, right? Like that's kind of what it's become is we sit down and we share a meal and it, that's a beautiful thing. Um, but to stop telling that story of this kind of like nicey, nicey glossing over of what really happened you know, and to uh, think critically. And it's not really about feelings, right? It's about doing better as people. Yeah. And it's not just communities, it's, it's all of us. Like we need to do better and to be informed and to look at each other and to see each other with equity. 
mm -hmm. and with empathy. Definitely, and, and that's all it really is, just like equality and being able to look at the next person and not really change your views on things and be able to show empathy as well, you know? Right, like everything's always, is, it was so long ago. No, it really wasn't, Yeah. right? Like these yeah. are like, in a lot of these communities, like a lot of these different demographics even, it's like, these were like our grandparents, right? Like mm -hmm. my grandmother went to boarding school, you know, to get her language and culture stripped from her. Right. So did all of her sisters, like that happens. She's still mm -hmm. alive, you know, like these are not, oh, that was forever ago. It was, it was not that long ago. Right. Not and there's still people <laughs> today who live through all that too. So it can't possibly be that long ago. There's still, you know, people could tell those stories to this day, so. Right. I mean, it's the same thing with civil rights. It's the same thing with so many other things that people are still carrying and holding those times. Right. And, and that that experience in their hearts. And you don't undo trauma like that in a generation or two. Right. Exactly. Like it, it, especially when you're not even telling the truth. Like, right. That doesn't. Happen. For sure. So you spent the beginning of this week going around to, you know, a few different tribes and help them prepare for winter and sharing skills. So take us through that experience. Yeah, we're down here in Nevada right now. Um, our collective has been uh, skill sharing and doing some trainings for doing up in uh, Paiute territory. Mm -hmm. They are fighting a lithium mine that is wow. on the other side of what transferring to renewable energy looks like. Like, like mm -hmm. those minerals have somewhere. People don't really think about that, but um please uh check out people of red mountain um they're folks that are not only fighting to protect their lands uh but they want to build a man camp in their community and they've been bulldozing elders homes and that is something that i haven't really seen uh in in all the travels to do it so like that's a really tragic situation and they need they need uh awareness brought and they need support uh, and so that's what we're, we came down to do and gave them some some gear and tried to share all the skills that we have to, to build up a good defense of their home. Um, and next we're heading to uh, Black Mesa over in uh, Navajo Diné Terra territory mm -hmm. um, to help elders with chopping wood and for the winter. Nice. So people who are watching this interview, how can they, you know, what are some resources they could use to, to help your cause and, you know, provide support? If you guys want to check out a good new collective, uh, please do. That has like our links on it and you can learn more about this big long fight that we just engaged in to protect our own homelands and the work that we've continued to do to support our community and uh, stand up for what's right. Uh, check out Unkitua. I know that they're uh, one, of the, one of the folks that's, that's getting a, uh, getting some some uh some love from this interview mm -hmm. uh, reach out to people of red mountain uh there's another group called she's chiff or che um all kinds of great work out there just look also look at the tribes in your area like do that, yeah. <laughs> do that simple stuff. i guarantee there are tribal people around you you probably just don't even know yeah that's a, that's a great point you know all it takes is one you know quick google search and I'm sure anyone could just find all the information they need. Right. There's got to be, there's tribal communities around you. They're still here. Yeah. They're probably working on some kind of, some kind of thing for their communities always. Mm -hmm. Like all their communities are. So, uh, yeah. Cool. But um, that's the wrap for the interview. And, you know, I definitely want to give you the last word to, to close this out. Um. I guess uh, be well, uh, be brave and strong and uh, stand up for what's right. And remember that you have agency and power. A lot of the uh, systems in place would have you believe that we're just one person and one person can't do anything. But that is not what I've seen. I've seen little groups of people almost over tip an entire industry, right? Like that's, that's the power of the people. That's always been the power of the people. When we come together, we are very strong. So, uh, you know, we're all standing together when we, we choose to. So it's, a, it's for us to make that choice. For sure.
powerful words, Steph. And yeah, everybody, thank you for tuning in. I just want to thank Tara again as well for joining us, especially during this week and, you know, sharing your visions and you know, the work you've been doing and informing us as far as like when it comes to Native American culture and the fight you're doing as well and all the amazing work you're doing. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. And thanks for, for sharing the platform and the space. Appreciate yeah, of it. course. It's our pleasure. Okay. Right, cool. <laughs> thank you, Sarah. Yeah.